All right, good morning, everyone. This is Gary Ryan for the Fed League Flash with the, uh, well, it ends up being the second of two videos I'm doing today. Um, if you haven't watched the earlier video, you'll see why. All right, so uh, today, um, I, when I was going through things yesterday, um, I kind of ran out of time as far as uh, questions that uh, some of the questions are being asked as far as what's going on with the Fed. And uh, one of the questions was, um, and I was asked this by a couple of different people, uh, it, the, the new lease agreement that the Binghamton Black Bears just signed, why is it so specific? I'm uh, going to do a very, very brief rundown on history of hockey in Binghamton, 50 years worth. So yeah, we're going to condense it way down. Um, we'll kind of talk about why the, the wording is so specific in the new lease agreement. All right. So hockey started off in Binghamton with the old North American Hockey League, which was the top feeder league for the old WHA. Um, it's kind of like the WHA's version of the AHL. Uh, but anyway, I guess the Broom Duster started there, and uh, four years, um, that was as long as the league lasted. The league was not really uh, financially uh, uh, soluble. So, uh, yeah, so but anyway, the Dusters ended up going the four years. The league folded. Now, the Broom Dusters entity, uh, if you will, ended up getting carried over to the AHL. At this point in time, 1977, the AHL was in real danger of closing up shop. Um, the league had been around since 1936. We we're now down to five teams as one of the charter members, the Providence Reds, or the Rhode Island Reds, uh, closed up shop. So Binghamton, along with the Philadelphia Firebirds from the NAHL, came into the AHL. Kind of helped save the league, really. And uh, now the AHL is the developmental league on uh, North American hockey. Okay, so, um, uh, yeah, the, the Dusters continued for three years uh, in the AHL. And uh, uh, bo bo both iterations of the Dusters, the team drew very, very well. Uh, most years in the a NHA. N-A-H-L, excuse me, uh, they were second in attendance. Um, didn't, it, it, attendance kind of waned during the AHL years, but um, the, yeah, it, it still ended up being a very good, uh, solid move. So, you know, Binghamton for a while was kind of a cornerstone. I wouldn't, I don't know if you'd say cornerstone. The Hershey Bears were a cornerstone. But Binghamton, uh, Binghamton was a very important part of the AHL. So 1980, uh, the Bruins, uh, they were the parent team for the Dusters. They severed ties. The expansion Hartford Whalers needed a, a team. And so Binghamton became the primary uh, farm team for the Hartford Whalers, the Binghamton Whalers. Uh, Binghamton Whalers had... Uh, Moderate success at the gate. Uh, the attendance ranged anywhere from like 3,070 to uh, 3,900 per season. And uh, second year, they go to the Calder Cup Finals, uh, runners up there. The last year of the Whalers, abysmal season, 11, 60, and 9. Uh, still 3,300 fans per, per game showed up that year. Uh, so the Whalers decided to pull out, and so the Rangers came in, and so Binghamton became the primary uh, farm team for the New York Rangers. Uh, this was kind of like the heyday of Binghamton AHL hockey. Uh, had the best regular season of all time in 1992-93. Uh, attendance ranged anywhere from 3,900 to 4,300 per game. Um, and then the management decided, yeah, we're going to make some money off of this team, sold the team to Hartford 
because the Hartford Whalers were moving to Carolina. Oh, there's a new building sitting there in Hartford. Let's move the franchise there. Where they still are today is the Hartford Wolfpack. Uh, very, uh, very bad day in Binghamton hockey history. So, uh, the response was a local ownership group brought in a team uh, to play in the United Hockey League, which at that time, the ECHL hadn't really gained traction yet. So the UHL was the primary double uh, A uh, hockey league at that point. So the BC Icemen were born and they played for five years and attendance wasn't that great. Uh, there was a lot of people who was like, well, this is an AHL hockey. So, yeah, attendance ranged anywhere from 2870 to 3070 per season. It, it really was a good league, um, but the fans had just been spoiled by the AHL so much that, you know, the Icemen really didn't get the support they needed. So in the fifth season, a new owner came in, said, I'm going to get us back into the AHL. We're going to get Binghamton back into the AHL. Uh, went through a, an extensive financial uh, investment that ended up not working out. Uh, the guy ends up filing for bankruptcy. The team kind of wanes. The, the UHL at this point is starting to fade. So now Bing's fans are going, are we going to have hockey next year? Okay, so you get the... Um, local group that owned and operated the Binghamton Rangers involved again. They work out a deal with Eugene Melnick, who was the president uh, and owner of the Ottawa Senators. So the Binghamton Senators are born. 15 years they lasted. And uh, so that was uh, you know, the longest lasting franchise in Binghamton hockey history. Uh, 2010, the 2011 season, they won the Calder Cup. Uh, and then the later seasons, there just wasn't much investment going on. Ottawa wasn't really worried about developing players. Um, and so you know, hockey in Binghamton suffered. The team didn't do as well. Attendance started to fall off. And so finally, Eugene Melnick bought the team. So we're going to move it to Belleville, where it is today in the AHL. And so once again, Binghamton's going, ah, are we going to have hockey? So Tom Mitchell, the local owner, works out works out a deal with the devil. <laughs> um, the Binghamton Devils are, uh, are born as they work out a deal with the New Jersey Devils to move the, the Albany team to Binghamton. Five-year contract assigned, and right from the get-go, it, it's, it's not good. The product on the ice isn't very good. Uh, attendance is steady, but not great. And uh, New Jersey is already in year two looking for an out. Um, they'd hang on for another year. And COVID hit. That was kind of their opportunity to say, okay, we're going to go elsewhere. See you. Bye-bye. We're going to move the team to Utica. So, again, Bengtson's going, no hockey. Enter Andreas Johansson, owner of the Black Bears. And uh, actually, at that time, he was the principal owner of the Watertown Wolves. But he and Commissioner Don Kiernan saw an opportunity. Uh, Binghamton was always in the FPHL's vision. Uh, just They couldn't compete with the AHL franchise. First year of the FPHL, or the FHL, there was a team for 25 games, and Binghamton didn't draw. So now there's no competition, and they can play at the arena. So uh, the FPHL saying, okay, now is the time for us to move into Binghamton. We think this is going to be a very good opportunity. So, of course, uh, Johansson ends up bringing the team he sees things are going very, very well. So he sells his principal interests in Watertown and uh, focuses solely on Binghamton. And that brings us to today. Uh, the extension gets signed with Broome County, where the Binghamton is. 
and with the arena board. And uh, now there's been so much fluctuation between different teams, though. Johansson was very smart. And he recognized, look, there's always going to be, this is a prime market for hockey. It's been so for 50 years. A lot of people would love to get a franchise in here. I want to protect my interests. So he worked out a contract with Broome County Arena, uh, stipulating if an ECHL team wanted to come in, uh, no, that's not going to happen. An ECHL team cannot bump the Black Bears. Uh, not an AHL team could, but uh, we'll look at this uh, in just a minute. Uh, there was a lot of talk bandied about this last year, even in spite of the success that the Black Bears were having both on the ice and at the gate. Uh, people getting, going, you know, we want a better product. We want AHL hockey or at least ECHL hockey. Andreas heard those those rumblings, and uh, that's why he pursued the wording of the contract as it is. Um, Tom Mitchell, owner of the Rangers and the, the Senators for a while and the Devils, he has made noise about trying to bring in a higher level of hockey in the Binghamton. Is it going to happen? I don't think so. For one, Tom Mitchell does not have the pull that he used to have with the AHL Board of Governors. Second of all, the whole market, the whole landscape of minor league hockey has changed. And I don't think the AHL would be interested in a market as small as Binghamton, even though Binghamton was kind of one of the founding blocks of the current AHL. Uh, so... Yeah, here here's a quote from Tom Mitchell um, when the team was when the Black Bears were announced in May of uh, of 2021. Um, he said, um, "I support the idea that something comes into the arena uh, in the way of hockey in the interim here, and I'd be supportive of it. Keep the rink going, keep it AHL ready. If somebody referring to Johansson." Wants to do something, I'm not going to be involved, but I'd be supportive of it. Hint, hint, hint. Okay, so that was not lost on Johansson. So now, last year, after winning the Division II AAU Championship, Binghamton University announced, hey, we want to take our hockey program and take it to D1. So we're going to go D1 in the 24-25 season. Who would they play? They have been playing at a small community rank uh, at uh, community college and uh, just outside of Binghamton. They only seats 750 people. You can't, you can't support a D1 program with that. So they need a bigger place. So is the D1 going to replace the FPHL? Now people start asking, asking that, and then the move stipulates uh, by with the signing that the Black Bears are the primary tenant of the arena. They have their pick of dates. They have facility access priority. They have priority in scheduling practices and team events. So Andreas says, while we love to support the growth of hockey here in Broome County, we believe as primary tenants of Visions Veterans Memorial Arena, it would not work out, meaning a partnership or sharing the arena. Uh, Binghamton would have the say as far as if Binghamton University could play their D1 games there. So if the B, if Binghamton University wants to go D1, they're going to have to build their own arena. So that's the way, the reason why things were so specific in the contract uh, in the three-year lease uh, extension. So um, Johansson's protecting his assets. So that's a brief story of how we got to here. Uh, let me know what you think about this. Uh, give me a, a like and a subscribe down below. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. In the meantime, we'll prepare another video for tomorrow. All right, I'm Gary Ryan for the Fed League Flash. Thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you again soon.